Well, just like that the preseason is halfway over. The next to last preseason game is typically the dress rehearsal before the regular season. Most starters play and the key younger players may stick around for a half or more. This game against the Atlanta Falcons will present an excellent opportunity to observe some key matchups that will have serious ramifications on the regular season. The game against the Chicago Bears was frustrating for some fans. Granted, in the end the Dolphins lost that game, but there were a lot of things to be encouraged about. The defense looked unstoppable when it was mostly first and second string players on the field. Both Noah Igbenogany and Nick Needham saw extended action and played well. While the offensive line definitely had its struggles, Tua showed the ability to rise above non-ideal circumstances to perform. Those little victories are the whole point of the preseason. It really makes no difference who wins at the end of the game. Coaches have a list players that they want to get tape on and situations that they need to see unfold on the football field. Winning is always nice, but it shouldn't be the main goal. Without further ado, here are three key matchups that fans should focus on in Miami's preseason contest against the Atlanta Falcons. 1. Eric Rowe in the defense versus Kyle Pitts. Now, there is a possibility that we won't even get to see this matchup on Saturday, but it would be great if we did. Pitts was held out of Atlanta's first preseason game last week against Tennessee. When explaining why, head coach Arthur Smith gave a nod towards the importance of their following game in Miami. Like I said earlier in the week, we feel like he's right on schedule. Wanted him to go through the routine of getting to the stadium, going through the warm-ups. Like I said, this week is going to be big for him, going down to Miami. It's a very aggressive and very talented secondary. But like I said, Kyle is right on schedule. If we felt he was behind, we probably would have put him out there. It sure sounds like Smith is prioritizing this week against Miami and that's probably because he knows the challenge that Pitts will face. No one was targeted more in coverage against tight ends than Eric Rowe in 2020 and very few players had as much success. He isn't a perfect safety, but he excels at his given role the tight end eraser. It is also worth noting that Rowe faced the consensus top three tight ends in the NFL in 2020, George Kittle, Travis Kelsey, and Darren Waller. Only two players got the better of him all season Kelsey and Waller. The question that we should all be asking is where will Kyle Pitts fit into all of this? His ability as a receiver is arguably already on par with those players, but we haven't seen him take a snap in the NFL. The answer to that question will have ramifications for the regular season as well when Miami faces Atlanta Week 7. 2. Austin Jackson and Miami's Offensive Line versus Atlanta's Defensive Line for those of you that missed our offensive line review, our first team tackles, Austin Jackson in particular, had a disappointing outing in Chicago. Week 1 of the preseason isn't time for panic just yet, but Miami's tackles are in need of an encouraging performance. In particular, Jackson and Pankey both struggled mightily in passing sets. Jackson had the second-worst pass blocking grade on the team per pro football, 31.8, only to be outdone by Adam Pankey. Atlanta will present a really great opportunity to see Jackson and the rest of the tackles bounce back. That's because no one will be facing off against Robert Quinn or Khalil Mack in Atlanta. Dante Fowler Jr. is likely to be Atlanta's best pass rusher and while he was fresh off a 15-sack performance in 2019, his first season in Atlanta was disappointing. So disappointing in fact that he agreed to take a pay cut this past off-season. Outside of Fowler, who didn't even play last week, there aren't any standout edge rushers. Tuzer Skipper, Adetokunbo Ogundeji, and Jacob Tuioti Mariner shouldn't strike fear into any offensive tackle's heart. If Jackson and the other first team tackles, assuming that isn't reshuffled prior to the game, struggle to keep Tua clean against Atlanta, we can start to panic. Interior players. The other interesting matchup in the trenches will be the interior against Grady Jarrett, assuming he suits up. Jarrett would be the best interior defensive lineman this group has faced. Outside of Jarrett, this isn't a group full of standouts. The guards and centers should continue to showcase respectable play. 3. Tua Tungavailoa vs Atlanta's Secondary Atlanta is going to be a perfect tune-up game for Miami's offense. Much like their defensive line, the Falcons' secondary leaves something to be desired. 
Pro Football ranked that secondary as being the worst in the NFL for 2021 and with Miami's revamped receiver room, it should be a fun day at the office for Tua Tungavailoa. Four safeties played at least 200 snaps for the Falcons last season Keanu Neal, Ricardo Allen, Sherrod Neesman and DeMonte Kazee. None of them are still with Atlanta. Veteran free agents Eric Harris and Duran Harmon, along with recent draft selections Jalen Hawkins and Richie Grant, will form a new-look safety unit in 2021. The Falcons will need better play out of their young cornerbacks as well. None of A.J. Terrell, Isaiah Oliver and Kendall Sheffield have recorded a coverage grade higher than 60.0 in the past two seasons. A lot of fans are going to focus on the interception against Chicago, but Tunga Vailoa looked really sharp against the Bears this past Saturday. Even when facing pressure, Tua was able to move in the pocket to evade defenders and showed off his pinpoint accuracy. It was a really encouraging afternoon for the second-year quarterback and it's time to start stacking good games back-to-back. It remains to be seen which of Miami's receivers will play against Atlanta, but with the depth they've got this year, it really shouldn't matter. If the line can protect Tua, he should be able to pick apart this secondary. He's likely to get some extended action against Atlanta and with another strong performance, the hype train will officially be leaving the station. Final thoughts. Hopefully, Kyle Pitts will make his debut and we can see how Eric Rowe stacks up against him. If the line has a day to forget, we can start to inch our finger closer to the panic button. Finally, look for Tua to have an even better game this Saturday. The preseason isn't always the most exciting thing to the average fan, and I get that. If you don't have an in-depth understanding of Miami's roster, you're stuck watching players that you know nothing about. With that said, this contest against Atlanta should be one that every Miami Dolphins fan tunes in for. Starters will get an extended look and the offense should put up some fireworks against a beleaguered Atlanta defense.